Well, hello, 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 and welcome to my channel. This is Myron Hodges, and this is the Sunday School Review. Amen. Come on in and join me for another wonderful lesson today. Amen. This is going to be a powerful teaching this week. It's about the covenant that God has made with Sarah and Abraham this week. Amen. So before we get started with the lesson, I'd like to open with prayer. Heavenly Father, so gracious and good. Lord, we thank you for being a faithful God. We know that heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will not pass away. You remain the same, and you are with us in good times and in bad times. Father, we ask that you keep us trusting in you, even in our darkest hours, Lord. We pray that the evil of this world would not cause our faith in you to fail. Father God, we, we, we're praying for the people in Israel today, this morning, Lord. And, and, and you have your way there, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. So once again, uh, this is lesson number seven this week. And the title for the lesson this week is A Promise to Sarah. Amen. Uh, we will be coming out of the Genesis once again. And we'll be in chapter 17, chapters 18, and also chapter 21 of Genesis today. So... Um, once again, it's called a, Pro a Promise to Sarah, and I'm going to open with the overview for the lesson today before I just delve into reading the scriptures and giving, um, giving you the Bible base and so forth. Amen? A promise is defined as a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen. Today's lesson begins with God changing the name of Sarai, which means princess, to Sarah, which is a noble woman. She is no longer a princess to Abraham alone, but has now become a princess, leader, and noble woman to the multitudes. God tells Abraham, I will bless her, Sarah, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of many nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And you'll find that in Genesis 17 and 16. Abraham is, asked, is, is then asked the question, is anything too hard for God? At the appointed time Sarah gave birth to a son, Abraham was a hundred years old when Isaac was born. Through the fulfillment of God's promise, Sarah's laughter of unbelief was turned into laughter of joy. Amen. So this is going to be quite the interesting lesson today. Um, I'm going to be talking about this once again, um, the covenant, but also we're going to be talking about the faith of the faith that Abraham had when he uh, was was given um, the command to the Lord, and he followed through by faith. Amen? So, our Bible basis for the lesson today are coming out of Genesis chapter 17, verses 15 through 17. Then chapter 18, verses 9 through 15. And then the final uh, reading will be from chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Amen. And our Bible truth for the lesson today. Delayed promises of God always have a purpose. In the memory verse. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And you'll find that in Genesis chapter 21, verse number two. Our lesson aim by the end of the lesson, we will summarize God's promise to Sarah, appreciate life as a gift of God, and thank God for his faithfulness to the faith family across the generations. Amen. And our background scriptures today, once again, Genesis chapter 17, 
15 through 17, chapter 18, 9 through 15, and chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Amen. So as always, I'd like to ask you to like and share the videos with your friends and family. And if you're tuning in for the first time, it truly would be a blessing to have you join uh, my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hit the notification button so you'll know when the video is being posted. Amen. So let's just start with the reading of the verses for the lesson today. And I'll be starting with Genesis chapter 17, verses 15 through 17. And verse 15 reads, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Verse 16, And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall, she shall be a mother of nation. Kings of the people shall be of her. Amen. Verse 17 reads, Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a, a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is in her nineties, bear? Now we're dropping down to chapter 18, verse number 9, and it reads, And they said unto him, Where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. Verse 10, And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. Lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind them. Verse 11 reads, Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it, and it ceased to be with Sarah after that manner of women. Verse 12 reads, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have a pleasure, my Lord being also old? Verse 13, And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of absurdity bear a child, which I, am, which I am old? Verse 14 reads, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of Lord life, and Sarah shall have a son. Verse 15. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Now we're moving now to chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did, did, did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2 reads, For she conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Verse 3, And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Verse 4, and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. Verse 5, And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Verse 6, And Sarah said, God hath made me laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And for the final verse of the reading today, verse number seven. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah would have given him suck? Verse 
children suck. For I have borne him a son in his old age. Amen. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the, the scripture today. Amen. So once again, this lesson is titled, A Promise to Sarah. And this time, um, Sarah is a part of the covenant that God has made with Abraham. And the part of that covenant is the son that he, that she bore um, to, 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 to Abraham. And they named him Isaac. Amen. So the biblical definitions that I have today are reference to the change that the Lord made here. And the first one um, for the biblical definition today is Sarai. And it is princess. Amen. And the second uh, one today is Sarah. Noble woman. Amen. And a princess, a leader. Amen. And the context for this lesson today, our Bible tech context will be the sign of the covenant. Amen. And the way I have the verses summarized today um, will be by the chapters. And we'll start with uh, chapter uh, 17, verses 15 through 17. And I have it titled, Sarah's Part in the Covenant. And then we'll move down to verses 9 through 15 in chapter uh, 18. And I have it titled, The Purpose, The Promise confirmed. Amen. And then for the final uh, verses for the reading today, uh, we'll be coming out of chapter 21, verses 1 through 7, and I have it titled, The Promise Kept, and then I'll read from the the uh, Bible uh, application of the lesson today, and I'll give you the principal takeaways, and I will read from the summary and close. Amen. So let's get started here. I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the first couple of verses and I'm going to summarize the verses for you today. This was an exciting lesson. Um, this this is truly um, showing you how when God makes a promise that he, 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 he keeps it. So he had promised Abraham a son and uh, uh, because he was worried that uh, he had no, no son, no seed uh, to carry on except for his uh, servant in the house, Eliezer, and he was concerned that he was going to have to leave all of his, uh, his, uh, he, he, that was going to be his heir, and he didn't have an heir. And we know that um, Sarah had gotten ahead of herself in prior chapters, in probably, I think it was chapter 16, and she convinced uh, Abraham to go into her handmaiden and lie with her and have a son. And that was 25 years prior to this. And um, he had, they had Ishmael. And um, the Lord had uh, told uh, Abraham to, to listen to his wife and he had to send uh, Ishmael away. And I'm sure that was heartbreaking because, that, you know, he loved his son. Amen. So anyway, I'm going to get on back in here in uh, chapter 17. And once again, I have it titled, The Sign of the Covenant. Amen? And I'm going to read verse 15 of chapter 17. And God said unto Abraham, <clears throat> As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt no, no longer call her the name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her, I will bless her, and she shall be the mother of nations. Kings of the people shall be in her. Amen. So we know that through her line and Abraham, that that is the line which Jesus Christ will come through. Amen. So what do we have here today for Sarah's part in the covenant in verses 15 and 17? So we see here that today's lesson text, begins in the midst of God's fifth communication with Abram. 24 years had actually passed since God's first promise to Abraham, and he was explicit about the details of the promise. So we notice here that God changed Abraham's, Abram's name to Abraham to reflect, to reflect that he would be the father of many nations. Amen. 
There would be kings in his lineage. God would always be their God. And Canaan would be their land forever. You will find that in verse verses 4 to 8 in chapter 17. Amen. So as a sign of this covenant, Abraham and all his males in the house were circumcised. And thereafter, each male would be circumcised at eight days. Amen. And we know that each time God communicated with Abraham in the past, he never mentioned Sarai. And we also know that she was barren, which would have made God's covenant quite impossible. Amen. So here, Abraham was puzzled by the situation. And we see here, he says, O sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? And this is what we were talking about just a few minutes ago. Since you have given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. However, God reassured his servant that his, his heir would be of his flesh. So he was letting him know that he was to have a son of his flesh. Amen. And this would have been devastating news for Sarai because of her barrenness. Sarah would have believed surrogacy was the only recourse. And we talked about this also with uh, Haggai. Hagar. So we can only imagine the hurt and shame she already carried being exacerbated by her incapacity to provide the child of the promise. She decided to help God's promise by suggesting Abraham sleep with her, her maid, Hagar. And we know from this union, Ishmael was born. And you'll find that in chapter 16, as I said, and that'll be in verse uh, 15 of the chapter of Genesis. However, God never needs our help to accomplish his promises. We need only to obey and wait in faith. And that's, that can be the tricky and hard part because sometimes, you know, it could take a long time and you, you get in your, you get out of it because God doesn't operate in time. We do. Amen. So we have to understand God had a plan and the power to bring it to pass. Amen. The child of promise would come through Sarai and would be called, and she would be called Sarah, for she would be the mother of many nations. The name change here means noble woman, the wife of a king or noble birth. This means Sarah's life had changed had changed direction. God was not only moving her from barrenness but also into nobility amen so she was now looked upon as a kingly noble woman a queen married to a king who was abraham his name was also changed from abram to abraham kings would be born among her descendants abraham never wavered in believing God's promise and his faith grew stronger and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God was able to do whatever he promises. Amen. And you also find that in the Romans chapter 4 verses 20 and 21. So I'm going to move on down to verses 9 and 15 of chapter 18 of this wonderful lesson that we have today. In verse 9 of chapter 18 reads, And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And, she, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. 
Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So now this is what we're talking about here. Uh, this is the promise confirmed. And we see here now that um, God has made a promise to uh, Abraham that he was to bear, she was to bear a son, and she laughed. And he was like, oh, so why did she laugh? And we know that she really was laughing out of probably nervousness and fear because she couldn't conceive in her mind that uh, at 90 years old that she was going to have a child. And not only that, she was barren. Amen. So let's get into what we have here for this section of verses here. Um, verses 9 through 15 in chapter 18. So now after finding out Sarah was included in the promise, Abraham was still in the waiting position. The perfect opportunity in a wartime position. The perfect opportunity for faith to grow. In the meantime, three heavenly guests, God and two angels, and you find this in chapter 19 of Genesis, verse 1, pay him a visit and confirm the promise. So now after eating and wrestling, the guests inquired after Sarah, who was the custom, had gone back to her part of the tent after serving the men. She overheard the Lord say, I will return to you about this time next year, and your wife Sarah will have a son. And you'll find that in verse 10. And judging from her reaction, Abraham probably had not told her she was included in this promise. Sarah, of course, thought this claim to be impossible and actually laughable. After all, she had she and Abraham were extremely advanced in age, and she was long past childbearing years. And even if she had been a younger woman, she was still barren. Sarah was not aware that God had heard what she believed to be a quiet comment to herself. God appeared to be only speaking to Abraham when he asked him why Sarah laughed. So to be told that all the years of hurt and shame would soon be over would have been unfathomable were it, were it not for God. So we say here, is anything too hard for the Lord to accomplish? Amen. He said, I will return this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Amen. Glory be to God. So there, there is the promise here, and this is the covenant that he has made with them. Amen. So I'm going to move down to the final uh, verses of the lesson today, in chapter 21, verses 1 through 7, and it is the promise kept. Amen. Verse 1 of chapter 21 reads, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, he, he, as he had said, and the Lord did speak unto Sarah as he as as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare, bare to him, Isaac. Amen. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him to do. Amen. So what do we have here for chapter 21, verses 1 through 7? The promise kept is, so once again we see... God has most certainly kept his promise. Sarah had become pregnant and gave birth exactly at the time he had ordained. And you'll find that in chapter 21, verse number 2. It was 25 years since God had 
called Abraham to leave his home. As God commanded, he named his son Isaac and circumcised the boy at eight days old as a sign of the covenant. Isaac names, his name means laughs, and Sarah did laugh again, but this time it was evidence of her joy, not disbelief. Amen? So we know that the name Isaac means laughter. He was a child born of laughter, and Ishmael was the wild man. All who all who hear about this awesome miracle will now laugh with me. So one can imagine after all the years of pain from her barrenness was nothing compared to the depth of Sarah's gratitude. When mercies have been long deferred, they are more welcome when they come. And when we when we can rejoice, and we can rejoice with her because if God would accomplish the impossible for her, he would accomplish the same for all who put their faith in him. And that's us. So we understand that delayed promises are never denied promises. Amen. So that's the, that's the scripture overview for the lesson today. I'm going to go ahead and read from the Bible application, then I'll give you the principal takeaways, and we're going to get into the summary and close in this lesson. Amen. So from the Bible application of the lesson today, it reads, Many of us face hardships daily, yet we continue to press on because God has promised us that he will never forsake us and that he is working for our good. But if the promises of God seem to take too long, the story of Abraham and Sarah encourages us to remain hopeful because no matter how how bleak the situation God will keep his word and after all he has already kept the ultimate promise because through Abraham and Sarah he provided he provided the way to salvation and, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior amen glory be to God so what are our principal takeaways for this lesson today? The first one talks about the promises of God. The word of the Lord is true. Stand in faith knowing nothing is too hard for God. Amen. Receive the word. Amen. Second, the walk of faith. Only believe and trust God. The power of the testimony. And finally, the roll call of faith, which is in Hebrews chapter 11. And our last principle takeaway for this lesson today is, wait upon the Lord. The Lord shall renew your strength and you. Let me read that again. The Lord shall renew your strength and renew you. Renew you, you shall mount up with wings as eagles. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not be faint. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm going to read from the summary and expository of the day and close with the lesson. But as always, I'd like to ask you to share and like the videos. And if you're tuning in for the first time, I just want to let you know you're tuned into the right place. And it'd be a blessing to have you click on that subscribe button and become a part of the Sunday School Review. Amen? Today's lesson gives us a glimpse into the life of what we would term the power couple. Power because they experience the power of God at work in and through their lives. Sarah and Abraham believed God and walked in faith. Instead of a life full of quick manifestations, we see a couple well-aged 
yet still waiting on the promises of God. After nature, society, and cultural norms indicated that it was too late, God stepped in and stated that this is the appointed time. Glory be to God. As believers, we know that God is with us and that his word is true. With this, we must stand in faith and wait for the manifestation of his precious promises. Allow the promise to Sarah to remind you that in your imperfection and lack of hope, that God is faithful. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Amen. Glory be to God. What a wonderful teaching today. This was a blessing, this lesson. It's a lesson of faith and hope and endurance and enduring in your faith. Amen. No matter what it may seem, God is faithful. Amen. So as always, I'd like to say to you, God bless you and God's love to you. And continue to have a blessed week. And we should all be praying for the people of Israel. Amen. Have a blessed week. Thank you.